Ah, Canada. Where the grass is greener, the skies are bluer, and where people take pride in hockey. Um, what, what am I talking about? I, I'm sitting here like, like I know what it's like to be Canadian. I'm not even from Canada. I don't even live in Canada. But anyway, guys, what's going on? Sean is back. I got a little mini series for you guys today. Uh, this is a two part series, so there will be two battles to this. Two parts, two battles, yeah. Anyway, um, I decided to make a little trip to Canada, except not really. But um, you guys get my drift. Anyway, first battle today is going to be against Kote, who is uh, pretty well known in the YouTube community. Um, you guys have at least heard the name, I would think. But, uh, yeah, uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it, and uh, I'll catch you guys in a minute. Alright, here we go. Let's go ahead and get started. This is the first turn of the match, so you guys have not missed anything at all. Leading with Yuxi, and he's going with Gliscor, and this Yuxi isn't running any speed at all, so I'm almost positive he'll outspeed me. I'm also thinking he could taunt first turn, and I don't want to waste a turn trying to get Stealth Rock up just to get taunted, and I'd immediately be put on the back foot, so to speak, so... Could go to Dragonite, but it's too early to reveal something else, and I need to scout, so I go for Psychic. He actually goes for Stealth Rock first turn, so that tells me he's not carrying the taunt, most likely. Um, but I decided to go to s for Stealth Rock now, since I figured if he didn't taunt first turn, he probably doesn't have it. He actually is going to decide to uh, go for Toxic, uh, Toxic this time, on this turn, I should say, and it does hit. I do carry the Lumberry though, but now that means I'm not going to be able to use Yuxi to as a one-time cancel for status later on. So I think for a little bit here, uh, Heat Train can take this thing out, but it's risky since he could predict me to switch out an Earthquake. It sounds silly, but some players do that, especially the ones that believe in high risk, high reward. So uh, in the end, I am going to decide to. Uh, go for the Psychic again, uh, thinking he may want to go for Toxic again to put Yuxi on a timer since Yuxi is really bulky. And um, that's pretty much what I'm going to go ahead and, and do here. But if he switches out because of the special defense drop, that's fine too since I can see what his switch in is. And he's going to go to Bronzong, not wanting to take a Psychic. Now, this is an interesting... This is interesting because he has already set up Stealth Rock with Gliscor. So I have no idea what type of set this Bronzong is. I have to switch now since Bronzong completely walls this Yuxi. Uh, Thunder waving it would be pointless. But I might as well get a little bit of damage on it. So I show that I do carry U-Turn and I'm going to go to Scizor. I want to get some prior damage on Bronzong first before bringing in Heatran to threaten the one hit KO. Uh, Heatran also has to come in safely since Bronzong commonly carries Earthquake. Um, but once I bring the Scizor in, he's actually going to go for the Hypnosis knowing that I will switch. Now unfortunately I made it pretty obvious what I was doing. And he knows I'm going to spam U-turn at this point, but I just decide to proceed with the plan anyway. And um, this U-turn, I was actually surprised how much damage it did since I'm scarfed. Uh, Kote thought it'd actually do more damage, assuming I was choice banded like most Scizors are. But after looking at the damage, he started thinking that I was scarfed as well. But I am going to go back to Yuxi since I don't want Scizor going to sleep. And he goes for Hypnosis again. And he misses again. Now I was actually hoping he'd put Yuxi to sleep. Since Yuxi has pretty much done his job. Although it could paralyze anything fast. He could probably have. That's really what Thunder Wave is for. If I see any key threats that I need to slow down. I can get, I can paralyze them so... 
but here I thought he might predict me to go back to Scizor and go back to Hypnosis to try and put that to sleep so I decide to stay in and Psychic because if anything is going to take a nap it's Yuxi. He does predict me to stay in though and goes for Toxic which was a good play. Uh, this is a very interesting Bronzong set so far but I still think he has Earthquake so I don't want to bring Heatran in just yet. Um, but guys just keep that in mind for later on in the match. But I think again for a while here since I don't know what else this Bronzong could do. I just don't want other stuff getting crippled since this team is actually fairly weak to status. And I usually use Yuxi as a uh, status fodder or death fodder as well as a defensive pivot to alleviate that somewhat. I'm thinking Wide Lens is a possible item since he's carrying two status moves that can miss. I'm also thinking Dragonite can beat it as well and would be a safer switch after something goes to sleep. Although you will see later on why this may not be true. Um, but anyway, I can sit in here and let Yuxi die as I spam Psychic since I was thinking he could Hypnosis again predicting Scizor to come back. I could Thunder Wave but it is Bronzong and he has Gliscor, although people don't expect Thunder Wave from Yuxi. But I decide to go for the Thunder Wave anyway, despite that. Uh, no, no matter what I did, I would show that I really have nothing better to do. And he actually reveals Empoleon here, which I thought was a little weird since Bronzong can take Psychics better overall. But then again, Bronzong's at half health, and Empoleon's typically specially defensive. Can't do anything to Empoleon either, but I do have a good initial switch in for it, and I plan to scout it set like I did the last match I used this team in. So I go to Quagsire and he actually shows Feather Dance and I almost fell out of my chair when I saw that. But regardless, I still want to scout for the Grass Knot. And now at this point, I know at minus two, Earthquake is not going to one hit KO this Empoleon if I even did think about staying in. So I'm going to go to Scizor now and he's actually going to switch out as well and he's going to reveal that he has a Machamp uh, because he actually was not quite sure what my next move was going to be here um, since Quagsire is really really uncommon in OU but I do decide at this point to just U-turn out thinking a dynamic punch was coming I had planned to go to Yuxi to try and get a Psychic off if he does dynamic punch but he actually goes back to Gliscor to force Scizor out. And in hindsight, that actually should have tipped me off on one th what type of set uh, Machamp was running. Since he switched immediately from a Scizor of all things. But instead of Yuxi, I'm going to decide to go to Dragonite. Since that's the only thing I have to really hit Gliscor hard. And I can't risk missing with Fire Blast with Heatran. So... This is another Mixed Knight set I'm running, but it's not the standard spread. Um, don't know if I mentioned it before, but I'm actually running max speed with a Naive Nature to outrun max speed Heatran. Since I was tired of them outspeeding Dragonite and exploding on, the, on me. And I also outrun Adamant Lucario, thinking they can outspeed and ice punch Dragonite or force me out to set up Swords Dance. So I go straight for the Draco Meteor since I will be able to hit something if he does switch and even Bronzong wouldn't appreciate it at the current health it's at. But he actually stays in though thinking I could be a Dragon Dance variant since if I even set up one it'd be pretty bad for him since he'd only have one Pokemon to take it on. As the rest of his team like mine seems pretty slow. I also noticed I outsped his Gliscor so it looks like it wasn't running max speed and I think I'm starting to get the advantage here so. I know the Kote comeback is coming and I have to prepare for it. So in comes a Porygon Z, uh, the one thing that would outspeed Dragonite, even if I was Dragon Dance. And the way he brought it in, I'm guessing he's choice. Uh, most of the ones I see are scarfed, and obvious Ice Beam seems obvious, but then I realize that I don't see download, so he has adaptability. But regardless of that, I go to Yuxi, since even Heatran, who resists Tri-Attack, would take a lot, especially if this turns out to be a Choice Specs Porygon Z. But I do think about this for a little while here. Um, I think there were a couple of other things I was thinking about, 
as far as who I was going to switch to. But um, this is actually pretty unfortunate because he is going to go for the try attack. And although Yuxi does live this try attack, I don't have a spinner. So the try attack does enough damage to where Yuxi is not going to be able to come back in. And I'm going to have to use something else to deal with his Machamp now. So at this point, I pretty much have to just fodder Yuxi out. Now the damage got me thinking that he was possibly scarfed since I think Specs try attack would have one hit KO'd. And I do some thinking here for a while because I didn't calc the damage on Yuxi so I actually still wasn't sure if uh, Porygon Z was scarfed for Specs. And after a while I decided to go to Scizor to U-turn because I was thinking that either he will switch fearing the superpower. Um, and I would know he was choice specs or he would stay in and get damage on me first telling me he is scarfed and I'd have to go to Dragonite for the extreme speed which is actually the worst case scenario here but again I think about this move here for a long time because I was really trying to decide who to go to but um, going to Scizor was actually a huge mistake, huge, huge mistake. And not calcing the damage was actually was a big mistake as well, because if I had calced it that turn, I would not have gone to Scizor here. Um, I would have chose something else. I would have chose Heatran actually. But um, at this point, he's actually going to stay in, hoping I'm going to U-turn again, since that's what I've been doing all game. And I have to use Scizor now to find out if he's scarfed or not because I didn't do any damage counts last turn. So he does outspeed, so now I know he's scarfed. But Scarf Scizor isn't bulky at all, so it takes a ton of damage. Enough to where Stealth Rock will KO it on the next switch in. Uh, Kote did point out that I should have just superpowered, and I could have. But again, the real mistake was bringing Scizor in in the first place. Because again, had I calped it on Yuxi. I would have brought Heatran in, in instead and take the try attack and take it out. The Scarf Scizor really has no business with Scarf Porygon Z. But um, that and Superpower could have left me vulnerable, especially given his last Pokemon, which you'll find out later. So unfortunately, I find out about Scarf too late. I've lost the momentum, so I'm forced to go for the extreme speed at this point to minimize further damage. And I made it pretty obvious, so he goes back to Empoleon to take it. And I then decide to uh, go for Super Power since Empoleon can take everything else I throw at it. And he does decide to fodder Empoleon out at this point. Now Machamp was the only other thing he could go to, but with the set he's running, it actually wouldn't appreciate Super Power too much. And I could follow up with a Draco Meteor. And he'd have to Life Orb stall me out at that point by switching around so down goes his Empoleon and he is going to bring Machamp in now because he figures either I'm low enough to where I can't switch out which I am uh, so I have to stay in or if I can come back in I'll only be able to throw one attack now I was thinking he could possibly be running bullet punch since I've already seen that he's not running standard sets at all so I'm going to go for extreme speed thinking he will take me out but um, you guys will see here what type of Machamp set he is actually running. And this was quite a surprise for me. Uh, definitely the crazy part of the match. But again, I do some thinking for a little while here. Trying to figure out which move I did want to go for. But I do go for the E speed. Uh, thinking he's gonna, he'll just attack me, take me out. But um, he reveals here that um, he carries the bulk up now at minus one I know I'm gonna be doing next to nothing with physical attacks now especially with him being at plus one plus one so I'm gonna go for Draco Meteor this turn and the Machamp takes it quite well and he actually shows that he does have rest now when I saw the rest I literally face palm because I knew he had Chesto Berry I knew the chest of was coming and sure enough it does and 
I already fell for this tactic once against 10456 and his chest arrest for alligator. And that almost cost me the match then. So I did find out later that his Machamp is actually running max HP, max special defense, I believe. So I have to go for Draco Meteor again. Uh, he knows I will take myself out this turn, so he's just going to bulk up again. And this is where running max speed comes back to bite me a little bit, although in the end it really didn't matter. But um, when you run max speed on a mixed attacker, uh, one of the offensive stats do suffer. And in this case, it's the uh, stat on the special attacking side. So I'm going to go to Quagsire here which at the time I thought it was a bad play but now I'm thinking at plus two dynamic punch should KO me since I don't have much physical bulk on this thing but I, I go for toxic anyway and if I live then I know he has no attack investment and I do live but confusion hacks kicks in which is Machamp's purpose in life and honestly I actually should have gone for earthquake instead to get direct damage but of course it didn't matter so I thought the quagsire play was still a really bad play on my part I don't know I think I was getting tired or something but anyway anyway I am forced to go to heatran now and I really didn't want to reveal it but it was either that or reveal my last and he hasn't revealed his last yet I am kicking myself at this point because I have Jirachi but I forgot to switch Flash Cannon to Psychic, since Infernape had been giving me some issues lately, as well as Machamp's not in the lead spot. I am Life Orb, so I thought a Fire Blast would KO even a max special defense Machamp, but he lives. I do get the burn though, which will be enough to KO it. If I had been running the standard mix Knight with max special attack, Machamp might have been one hit KO'd before I took damage but I would have had to hit Toxic for that to happen and unfortunately I didn't so it is a double down and at the time I thought Scizor could live the Stealth Rock damage but as soon as I switched him in and saw the HP I knew it would go down immediately which kind of sucks because I still I could have still used Scizor for one last scout although it probably didn't matter in the long run now I do reveal my last here which is Jirachi and I am still somewhat in the game at this point but he does bring out Bronzong. I go for Wish thinking he's going to Earthquake now to try to finish the game up. And I can at least try to get a few Combine boosts in while healing. And hope he misses Hypnosis if he tries to go that route. But he actually goes for Trick and I see that he has the Iron Ball. Which that really surprised me. But anyway, I am going to go for Combine now. Since I need to boost up for his last poke that I haven't seen yet. And he tries to Hypnosis again, but he misses. Now he's going to go for it one more time here. And um, he's finally going to hit the Hypnosis here. And I was really trying to get a few more boosts in. Uh, so that way, the only way he could really KO me was with a crit. And if he did manage to land the Hypnosis, I could try to wake up. Since I am running the standard Call My Wish Jirachi set. So I have almost max physical defense. Now here I believe I go for Calm Mind again, though it's possible I went for Wish. But the next turn he shows his final move which is Explosion. And when I saw that, I was raging. Because I was thinking to myself, really? You mean Heatran was actually a pretty safe switch? As long as I didn't switch it into a Hypnosis. I was positive he was running Earthquake, but he isn't. Uh, the Explosion does nothing since he is a defensive spread and so am I. But he does reveal his last year, which is Dragonite. And now I'm thinking this is a Dragon Dance variant, so an Earthquake is going to come my way since I'm at plus one special defense. I ran a Calc, and if he's adamant, Earthquake will one hit KO me. I still haven't woken up yet, so I have to go for hacks with Thunderbolt since Flash Cannon will not one hit KO at that range. Uh, he does show the Flamethrower, though, so that tells me he is kind of. He is a mixed Dragonite as well. So, but the last turn of the game here is pretty unfortunate because I, I 
I do some thinking for a little while trying to decide whether I should um, attack with Thunderbolt or I believe I was considering Calm Mind again. I'm not really sure, but eventually I am going to um, just try to go for the Thunderbolt, try to go for the hacks. So. But once he does reveal the flamethrower though, he's actually uh, going to get a critical hit. And the critical hit will definitely take Jirachi out, even at plus one. And that is going to be the game. But um, pretty unfortunate, but uh, it was still a good game regardless, Kote. I definitely hope to uh, play you again sometime. And... Um, a few things would have had to play out differently at the end, really, for me to pull off the win. Uh, I would have needed to get a second turn wake up to have a solid chance. But then it would have depended on if I went for Wish or Calm Mind, which I don't remember 100%. But in either case, the crit could not happen. Now, Flamethrower would have clean two hit KO'd me without it if he was running the standard spread. But if... I had woken up on the very last turn, I'd have to hope for the 20% Parahax chance with Thunderbolt. But none of that happened though. So really it's all theory mon, but um anyway, I'll leave that to the theory mondis theory monists to figure out. But anyway, still a great game guys, and stay tuned for um my next battle. I go up against another Canadian on a day two of my trip to Canada here. But until then, uh, Chun is out. Peace.